So all this happened last summer. I went home to China, eager to implement a project that I had designed here at Teachers College that aims to teach Chinese as a second language to ethnic minority students in rural China in a slightly unconventional way, a way that promotes and engages their culture, language, and tradition, as well as encourages environmental action and protection. I was very excited about my project. However, I had many concerns. I wonder whether my plan to teach Chinese in an alternative way would be socially, culturally, and politically acceptable in a minority classroom. And who am I, a person who had never spent long enough in a minority area of China to impose my teaching ideals on my students and to demand them to learn Chinese, protect their environment, protect their culture, all at the same time. What disappointed me the most was when I realized that most schools that I wanted to work with were not interested in my ideas, or they were closed because of summer break. It wasn't until a friend of mine told me about a Tibetan monastic school that was interested in having me over to teach its students Chinese that I could see some kind of light in my project endeavor. However, teaching at a monastic school was not at all my original plan. My initial plan was this, that I would teach a group of ordinary groups of boys and girls in a minority school somewhere in rural China, not at all in a classroom that's full of Tibetan monks like this. <laughs> I was very reluctant to teach monk students, mainly because I felt that if I had no guarantee whether my project would run in an ordinary classroom, how should I expect it to be successful in a monastic setting? And who am I? A Han Chinese, urban, profane, female teacher teaching in front of my students. I mean, what are my boundaries and what are theirs? Feeling very uncertain, I accepted the teaching offer anyway, thinking that if there is a demand for a Chinese teacher, I might as well meet the demand. Little did I know that that decision I made was going to open up a whole new world of possibilities in front of me, a world full of hope in teaching and learning. I still remember the first day I was asked to meet my monk students. It was a bright, sunny June afternoon, and I was relaxing lazily in my dorm, contemplating my life as a teacher at the monastic school. <laughs> and suddenly, my door was pushed open, and a young monk came into my room, pointing eagerly towards the direction of the school, asking me to follow him. I did what he said, and as soon as I arrived at the school, to my astonishment, Groups and groups of Tibetan monks, young monks, old monks, small monks, cute monks, tall monks, <laughs> all in their crimson red robes, were waiting at the courtyard, waiting for my arrival. And instantly, I knew that they were my students, and the principal had decided that that day I should meet all my students at once. <laughs> I did a rough count, and there were almost 70 of them, with ages ranging from nine years old to 50 years old. Nervously and carefully, I walked towards my students, feeling my heart pounding and my cheeks burning. I couldn't help myself from blushing because I've never met so many monks, so, be surrounded by so many, so many men and boys from another culture in my entire life. Very soon, the principal signaled me to enter the classroom and it's my turn to speak in front of my students. I knew I had to calm my nerve, so I took a deep breath, and this time, tried my best to look at my students. And a miracle happened. The eyes of my students caught mine, and in their eyes, I saw friendliness 
respect, curiosity, and most of all, trust that I not expected at all. And at that very moment, all my boundaries shattered. All my worries, anxiety, embarrassment were all gone. Nothing else mattered anymore. Not even gender, ethnicity, nationality, religion, status. What's left was only my understanding that I would be first and foremost their teacher, that I would be there for them, see them as who they are, as human beings with unlimited potentials, and trust that they would show me what it meant to be a good teacher. What happened in the following few weeks was an intensive 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Chinese language course that aims to also promote environmental protection and cultural preservation. It was a very experimental project involving lots of trial and error. The classroom, the monastery, the vast Grassland of the Tibetan Plateau became the learning sites for both my students and me. We tried to adapt to each other's presence and expectation. My Tibetan was not functional then, so I had to rely on one of my students, who is bilingual, to be my translator. Both he and I we co-taught many classes together, using our strengths to complement each other's weaknesses, and in many ways. Teaching and learning was no longer a one-person show. It involved so much collaboration, respect, deep listening to each other, often beyond boundaries and languages. In order to connect teaching Chinese with my students' culture and background, in one of the activities, I asked my students the questions: "So, what are the treasures in your community?" In their own mother tongue. My students told me that it's the Tibetan language, the Tibetan alphabet ga ka ga nga, that are what they treasure the most. And another group of students told me that it's the mountain, the river that they see they're so important in their life. And after gathering all their thoughts in Tibetan, I then helped them put these thoughts into Chinese. For example, Zhang Wen for Tibetan language, Shan for mountain, and He Liu for river. In addition to all this, my students and I we took time to explore the garbage issue in our community. That's to the river. We tapped into our collective knowledge as monks, environmental educator, um, cons produce consumers, to find the best solution to address the problem. What I realized was that my mom students and I we could be quite different human beings with different upbringings. Different worldviews. However, when we're able to find that middle ground in learning, where the knowledge of insiders and outsiders, male and female, sacredness and profane, modernity and tradition can collide, negotiate and collaborate, differences no longer mattered. New learning opportunities, new understanding emerged. In fact, it's the opportunity for me to include. Tibetan Buddhist philosophies into my teaching that excited me the most, and I'm still learning how to do this, how to merge together traditional wisdom, multiple perspectives,、um, knowledge, traditional knowledge, local knowledge, universal knowledge, into teaching Chinese, into improving the the minority education in China. And there's so much potential in this area. And this is the heart of educational innovation, revolution, and change. Teaching my monk students, I came to understand, and I came to realize my middle ground as a teacher who wants to make a change in the life of minority children in China. I know that when I'm fully present in front of my students, considering their growth and their happiness as my own. The river, mountain, language, grassland as my own, and treasure them as I should. I'm already making a difference. My monk students, how different are they from you and me? They cry, they laugh, they often like to have a good game of basketball, just like any other young man do. They have dreams, 
They have aspirations. It's a matter of how we can be there for each other to weave together our dreams, our humanity, into a net of well-being that protect us and allow us to continue to the future. I kept on reminding myself that this talk would not have happened had I not made up my decision to teach at a monastic school and overcome my fear to teach my monk students. However, the more I think about it, the more I realize that this talk is really not about me. It's about my students. It's the story of my students who have come so far, who have been so daring, willing, and patient to be there for me, to embark on this journey of teaching experiment with me. So the lesson that I would like to share with all of you is that it always takes that bit of courage, that trust, to overcome our fear, to go beyond boundaries, to embrace uncertainty, in order to build this middle ground where hope, strength, resilience, and reconciliation could flourish. I thank my monk students who have shown me the possibility of this middle ground. And I will encourage all of us to actively and creatively carve out this space in our life where compassion, love, and our own humanity outgrow, outgrow our own boundaries, and where nothing, nothing is impossible. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you.